I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. You know, the cloud is unprecedentedly dynamic and requires so many ways to keep in touch with what's going on, otherwise you just lose track of it all. So what we really need is an innovative way to communicate all of the status around every Azure service, and there's over 150 of them now, so that people don't get lost. And this has been quite a challenge in the past, but with what we're gonna show you today, I think we're gonna make this pretty exciting. As we talk about Azure Charts, so if you haven't done so already, please do click on our subscribe button and join us here at the Azure Academy community where we try to just help everybody learn as much about Azure as we can. And leave us some comments below on this video if you have any questions, feedback, or you wanna make a suggestion for an upcoming video. We'd love to hear from you. So for this video, we're gonna start off actually by looking at Twitter. So I opened my Twitter feed today and checked out what's going on in the world of Azure. This is what I saw, a tweet from Mark Racinovich, who is the CTO of Azure. Definitely somebody that you should follow if you want to learn about Azure. And he says here, want to see exactly what updates we're making to Azure services? Check out this cool site that lets you see all of them, azurecharts.com. So I was really intrigued and so I clicked on the link and here is what I saw, the Azure heat map. To be clear right up front, the Azure heat map was developed by one of our cloud solution architects, Alexei Polknovinikov, and I'm sorry Alexei if I've butchered your name, but Alexei uh, developed this and you can see his contact information under the about and this link here for developed by a Microsoft employee. That'll take you over to LinkedIn where you can see Alexei's profile and thank him for all of the awesome stuff that he has done getting this tool up and running. And as Alexi points out here, the Azure charts that are here are not a Microsoft service or product. This is just a personal project of his. And quite honestly, I think this is awesome and has delivered uh, a great way to consolidate everything going on in all of the different update points of Azure, which cover things like RSS feeds, the Azure updates page, news, statistic, other public updates. So this is just an awesome place to come and see exactly what's going on. So before we dig into the Azure charts and the heat map and, and all of this, let's first go to the Azure portal and you can see our home screen here. And uh, by the way, click subscribe if you haven't already so that you don't miss our upcoming video on the top 10 updates to the Azure portal that'll be coming out real soon. Now down at the bottom, we have a section now for useful links and one of those is recent Azure updates. So if you click on this, it goes to azure.microsoft.com slash updates, which is one of the places that you can go to see what's going on with Azure updates. But the benefit of the Azure charts tool that Alexi's developed is it pulls from there and other locations in order to give us uh, many things, including a heat map view of what's going on. And so if you're a person who just wants to see what's going on in the last seven days, you can click on this link and see the recent updates that have come out just this week. So the nice thing about this too is that because this is hosted for you, this is going to rebuild itself so that all of the latest update information is always present here, okay? And so you can see the last rebuild happened two hours and 45 minutes ago, and then this will periodically go through that rebuild process to update this heat map information. So now instead of me having to go and check out my RSS feed and other public update tools and the Azure updates page and other places, now I have one place to come where I can see everything across all major pillars and services in Azure. So this is just absolutely amazing. So this heat map view specifically digs into the hottest areas of Azure update items. So you'll find those across the top and they are the most highlighted in color. And we have many different ways that we can look at and slice this data up. So let me take you over to the Highlights tab. So one of the great things about this Highlights tab is that we can look at this in terms of regions and data centers, which features are being deprecated in this retirement section, and then things around security, compliance, open source, and other Azure services and individual feature updates as well. The beauty too of this is that I can look at this based on a specific Azure role. So for example, if I was a developer, 
developer, then I would care about what's going on with the SDKs and specific features that are here. And uh, I'm sure that Alexi would love to have your feedback. So if you would like to provide some of that and what you'd be looking for in the comments field down below, I'll make sure that that gets to Alexi. But let's take a look at if we were an architect then we'd be more focused on things going on in Azure regions and data centers, price offerings, and service retirements. And then also looking at a security-focused role, obviously security compliance, governance type of features and services are at the top of our list. So a great way to look at this data in a cloud role-focused manner. And then um, you can also look at it in all roles, which will just show you all of the data. Now notice that we have not yet clicked on any one of these tiles, and we will get there so just hang with me for a second I want to show you some more stuff first so on the overview tab we have the individual pillars and services and this is across all areas of Azure and you can see even the new Azure Arc is present here and we'll be doing a video on that relatively soon so hit subscribe so you don't miss that one as well and there are a lot of updates that we need to cover from Ignite so leave a comment and then it's first come first serve so wherever we see uh, the most interest is what we'll create so you don't want to miss any of that so the other nice thing, if you've noticed, is that as you mouse over every one of these tiles, there is a little tool tip that pops up. So let me focus here on one. So this will be Azure Sphere. And this Secure Connect MCU powered devices from the silicon to the cloud. So a way to totally look at those edge devices and bring them into the cloud. And then if we look at something else like Azure Key Vault, safeguard and maintain control of keys and other secrets, or we go to something like Azure Bastion, private and fully managed RDP and SSH to access your virtual machines. So highlighting the key feature of each one of these products. So if you are unfamiliar with something, for example, Azure Arc, you could mouse over and it says bring Azure services and management to any infrastructure. And this is any cloud as well as on-prem. So really awesome, can't wait to bring you that video. And Alexi was pulling this list from our current directory of cloud services, which you can click the link for and see the entire list as it's presented just off of the Azure page, if you want to look at it in that view. So back to the heat map for a moment. Now we can see that these are the most recent updates. So we want to see something here. So let's click on one of these recent updates and see what it offers. So we'll go to site recovery. And that brings us to the Azure Updates page. So we're not losing touch with this page by using the heat map or Azure charts. We're just getting a better visualization to help us consume that data easier. And then we can see the recent updates that have happened. This is already set up to look at this specific resource in Azure rather than everything that you have to then sift through to find it. So let's look at another one, say around Security Center. And again, we see a view specifically around Security Center in the Azure updates. And Azure Disk Encryption is in more places. There's a new way to do it, which is featured in an upcoming video. So subscribe so you don't miss that one. So let's go to the SLA tab here. Here we're looking at the Azure services according to their SLA. A lot of services have uh, multiple levels of SLA because a service level agreement basically means we promise to provide you this service with this amount of uptime. And if we do not meet that uptime, then there is something that we will do because we have not kept our end of the agreement. So we see here several services and these are shown kind of at their highest levels. So we see here Azure DNS is 100% SLA because if DNS don't work, then the cloud don't work. So if we click on this tile, that takes us over to the SLA page and you can see the SLA details. Okay? And then you can read up about that and the different service levels that we have for DNS. Now, something else to point out here is under the version history, you can see our release notes were to improved SLA to 100% uptime guarantee. So if we go back to the SLA board and we mouse over, you can see the tool tip that shows up gives that same update. So each one of these is set up to show the latest update and you will see something like under virtual machines that there is more than one level available. So if we click on virtual machines, you can see of course the latest update followed by all of the history and 
each one of the SLA details, and you can read all about that here. Under the Status tab, what we have here is the Azure Pillars and Services, which ones are in Preview versus the ones that are generally available. So the difference is that Preview is something that may not be fully backed by an SLA, like Azure Blueprints, or they may be a feature that is brand new and we're putting it out there publicly to get feedback from customers before we tighten up everything around the service and provide SLAs in general availability like private link. And then once those services have reached a certain level of maturity, then they are made generally available. And this typically means that they're rolled out to all of the Azure regions. They have standard SLAs behind them and Azure support. And then we have a timeline tab. Now, this is really cool because you can see all of the features broken down again in the same manner, but around their time frame for when those next updates will be occurring. So you can see we have certain certain amount of things planned for Q4 2019, and this is all public information. So you could have found the same info from somewhere else, but now you can come right to here to find this info in one place. So if you're looking at Azure Media Services and you wanna know what's going on, when you click on the tile, it brings you over to the Azure Updates page where you can look at the products based on their regional rollout. And then you can see which regions the product is supported in and we'll come back to that in a moment. Which of those regions are generally available versus future availability like media services in Germany West Central. And if we go back and look at Azure Bastion here, then we can see that there are even some regions where the feature is not generally available. It is still in preview. Okay, and again, the beauty of this is that it already filters the content of this page, which by default will just show you something like this. And now you've got to hunt and find the information that you're looking for and that it's totally doable, but this tool just makes it a lot easier on you. And again, we can change the view that we're looking at to look at a specific region if you're interested in that. So let me scroll down here. The new Norway regions, we can see a lot of services are planned to come into Norway over the next several quarters to build that region up. Okay, so a good way to see what's coming in Azure for your services across your region. That brings us to regions. And if we click on the regions, there's a drop down here and we can look at a particular regional scope, look up a region or a geode scope. So let's look at the region scope first. And so we can compare our central US region or any other region that we would like to another region. So let's take a look at central US compared to Norway East. So as we scroll down, first thing we see is these are the features that are in central US that are planned to eventually be in Norway that are just not there yet. And we can see Bastion as one of the grayed out tiles is going to be in preview as well as private link. But many of these others will be generally available. And then in the bottom section, we have the features that are in parity. And those features are available in Norway East now, just like they are in Central. So if we change now to look at our region lookup, so in region lookup, this is a pretty cool feature. This is where we can take a particular geography and again, compare it to another region, but a little more specifically. So if, for example, we go down to the United States and we're going to start building resources in the United States. And when we do, there are several key resources that we know we're going to need. Let me just select a few here. So we know that we're gonna need all of these different services. So when we finish selecting all of that then we can see if we want to look at features that are GA in the United States geography regions or what is GA in preview GA preview and future so I'm just going to select GA and hit search regions and of all of these services that we have selected there are three US regions that have all of them now if we were to expand this to say which ones also include features that are in preview then we see several more regions that are available if we're willing to use these services in preview. As for which services are in preview, you would have to do a look up on the presence tab and we'll get to that in a moment. Let's change geographies here and let's go to Asia Pacific and we'll push on our search again. And we can see that all of these services are available in East Asia and Southeast Asia in GA or 
preview. And then of course we can change it to GA preview and future. And then we can even go down to select our Norway regions. And we see that all of these features are not available in Norway at this time or planned for the future. So if we take off here the data explorer, and then hit search again, we can see that everything else is available in Norway East besides our data explorer. So how critical that is to our project or can we use that from some other region and still build out everything else in Norway East. So our region lookup will certainly help with discovering all of that. Next, we're going to look at this presence tab and we're going to look at this as the rollout heat map first. And if we mouse over them, we can see that this particular service of Time Series Insights is going to roll out to nine regions in Q1 of 2020. And if we click on that tab, then we again are brought back to the products by region. So while you would not get that kind of insight from looking at this chart, you would have to count all of that bits of data yourself. Alexi has done it for you by just mousing over these particular tiles. And then if you're interested in knowing where dedicated HSMs are going to roll out in Q1 of 2020 into those two regions, then you can come in here and read up more about that particular release. And then if we go back to presence and go to the presence heat map, and then if we mouse over any one of them, for example, we go to DevTest Labs, we can see that this is rolled out into 39 Azure regions in total with no future availability planned. But if we instead go to the IoT hub, this is currently in 37 regions with three additional planned. And then we can see the breakdown over the next several quarters when IoT hub will roll out to more regions. And because Alexi didn't do enough for us already, he's also created a fun tab where we can look at an Azure menu or take a quiz. And he's kind of set this up as a, uh, a service menu. So you could start off with your starters or appetizer services, get to your main dish services, and then even check out some services for dessert, like DDoS protection. When you click on any one of these, they'll take you over to the pricing page so you can learn more about the pricing structure, which this in particular is something that has been somewhat difficult to find for every one of these services. So there's several places that you could look to get it. Now you've got a one-stop shop. Come to the services menu and just click on any one of them to be easily brought to the location for pricing information on each service individually. Then we also had that Azure quiz. So if we check that out, we can hit our start quiz button. So the question is enabling quick, repeatable creation of governed environments. What is this? Well, I would say that would be Azure Blueprints. And I got that right. So I can go to the next question and you can just play a little fun game here. And then of course we had that about tab, which just tells us what Azure charts is and gives us uh, the link to Alexi on linkedin.com. But there's one final thing that I wanna show you before we end our video today. And that is that this entire page can be viewed in 3D. How cool is that? And then you still have all of the same updates and information and you can scroll down the page and, and find whatever it is that you're looking for, like dedicated hosts or cycle cloud or a Windows virtual desktop. And if you're interested uh, in any one of these services that we don't yet cover on the Azure Academy, give us some comments below and we'll be happy to make a video on that for you. So I hope that you've enjoyed looking at Azure charts and what the service here that Alexi has created can do for you. And a very awesome tool. Thank you so much, Alexi, for putting this together. And this should be a shout out for everybody to go and follow people like Alexi or Mark Racinovich or even myself on Twitter so that you can find out the latest information of what's going on in Azure. Like I said in the beginning, I found the heat map because Mark Racinovich tweeted it out. Who knows what nuggets of information are going to be on Twitter tomorrow? Definitely do that if you have not done so already. And click our subscribe button and join us at the Azure Academy community. I know I've said that several times in this video because there is a lot of exciting stuff happening around Azure. Appreciate what Alexi did. Go ahead and hit that thumbs up icon. And while you're down there, if you want to see an email, hit your inbox when we put out a new video, which is roughly once a week, you can click on that notification bell so that you keep track of all of our latest updates from the Azure Academy. Thanks for joining us for this video today, and we will see you next time. Happy learning.